Good evening once again and welcome uh, to this short Bible study uh, based on the readings uh, set for church services at this time of year, followed by a short time of reflection and prayer. My talk this evening is based on the readings for the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. If you are looking for my sermon about Candlemas, uh, you'll find that on St Mary's website. It was put up on the 31st of January. And if you um, subscribe to uh, Alan and Krisha Mayer's YouTube channel, you can find it there too. Uh, today's gospel is about authority, about the authority with which Jesus teaches in his first sermon and miracle at Capernaum. And it throws some disturbing light upon the health of democracy and politics in our own day too. But let me turn you around so that you can see what I'm talking about. So here we are. This is um, St Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. Uh, they were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, throwing him into convulsions and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. So that was the gospel set for last Sunday. Authority is problematic for us, but authority is central to the biblical message. The kingdom of God is not a democracy, as a character in the film Chariots of Fire once pointed out. And uh, democracy, as we know it, is not perfect but it is the least worst form of government, the least oppressive, the least likely to lead to demagoguery and dictatorship, although this does sometimes happen and takes a lot of effort to overcome. Democracy has its weaknesses, as we have seen in America recently, in the last weeks, the people there have been subject to false accusations of voter fraud and allegations of the theft of an election. Allegations and accusations coming from one of the most powerful people on earth, an authority figure in whom many had placed their trust. The people that took his allegations on board and tried to disrupt an announcement of the result of an election by storming a democratically elected assembly are to be pitied more than blamed. And the healing of those deluded minds will be difficult to achieve. They remain a powerful threat. But it has happened before as we saw in our reading from Deuteronomy. There, the people were warned against those who rely on rumour or fake news or conspiracy theories of dubious provenance in order to take or keep control over the people. To them, in that reading from Deuteronomy, God says, 
I myself will hold accountable any prophet who speaks in the name of a false god or who presumes to speak in my name and says a word that I have not commanded. We have to use our intelligence to tell the difference between the righteous prophet and the deceiver. Deceivers can persuade large numbers to follow them. Remember what the Israelites did when Moses was in the mountain speaking with God. The Israelites banded together to decide things their own way and they voted either to go back to Egypt or to worship a golden calf. And remember too that one of the few times the apostles acted unanimously was when they all forsook Jesus and fled. The world, especially the world of politics, can be very confusing. How important it is to have an intelligent and questioning mind when you have the privilege of a vote. God's redemptive word of authority, when it calls us to order, breaks through a noise that sounds amazingly like humans stampeding in the wrong direction, like the legendary lemmings, the whole crowd at the White House rushed together to try and take democracy by storm. Thankfully, wise heads prevailed in the United States House and Senate, but it was a close run thing and lives were lost. Defeated, the deluded crowd was driven back. But they have not gone away. Those who have admitted they had been duped or misled um, has meant for some of them swallowing their pride. But those who continue to refuse to recognise that they were mistake, mistaken or misled will take a lot of healing, a lot of convincing that they are conniving at their own self-destruction. Yes, we are right to be disturbed by authority when it is misused in any way. We learnt long ago that power corrupts. We learnt more recently that all authority is to be distrusted. Humanly speaking, these are important lessons. Yet one can no more live on suspicion than one can eat a political manifesto. Without trust breaking through afresh, we condemn ourselves to bleak, cynical lives. Trustworthy authority, therefore, appears as a strange gift from God, so that we may find the way forward out of our self-imposed prison. Of course, the costs of freedom sometimes make us shrink back. Notice in our Gospel this morning how the destructive, dehumanising, unclean spirit shrieks out its accusation that it is the one being destroyed. Yes, truth is an early victim in spiritual warfare, as in other kinds of warfare. The new teaching, with authority, as Jesus' onlookers remark with surprise, comes to cut through the shroud of lies, to announce the presence of the living, life-giving God, the only one in whose name a true prophet will speak, and to declare the victory of this God, the God of truth, over the ancient dragon of evil. Many cultures told tales of old about a young prince born to destroy the old tyrant. The young prince is spirited away into a secret place until the final battle comes. 
is spirited away in case the tyrant should strike against the young prince first, before he is ready. The early Christians recognised the grain of truth in this. In our Christian story, the old tyrant is the Satan, the inventor of fake news, the false accuser. Jesus, born from within the messianic community, is there to overthrow not only arrogant human authority, but destructive spiritual forces as well. True authority is thus the liberating rule of Mary's child. The idea that all authority is suspect turns out to be the last great lie. Real authority is revealed in Jesus and the shape and goal of this authority will never oppress or lie to us but will serve us and love us, will forgive us and welcome us home, will bring us truth and the freedom to be ourselves. Now, if you would like to have some time for thinking or meditating before our final prayers today, then please click on your pause button now. So let us pray. In our prayers, first these words from St. Paul, uh, Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 to 17. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let us pray. Let us give glory to God in the highest heaven, because from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. We pray for the Holy Church throughout all the world, that with one heart and one voice she may sing the praises of the Word made flesh. We pray for goodwill in the heart of everyone. We pray that truth may prevail over lies and that good news may be there for all the peoples to hear. We pray for peace upon the earth and an end to all oppression. We pray for the poor, the outcast and the homeless, for those worn out by the present health crisis, for the helpless, the lonely and the unloved, that they too may have cause to rejoice. 
we remember all who have gone before us, whose hope was in the Word made flesh. We hope to join with them in the worship of heaven. With Holy Mary and Joseph, the heavenly host, the shepherds, the wise men. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. And to conclude this blessing. May the Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in his own image, and yet more wonderfully restored us through his Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as he came to share in our humanity, so we may share the life of his divinity and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this night and for evermore. Amen.